Hi, in this video we will take a look at this IO Link Master and we will connect a few sensors to the parts and try to read some data from it from the computer. So this is a Comtrol IO Link Master and it was bought from Pepperell and Fuchs. We can start at the left here and look at the supply voltage. It can be inputted here and it can also be fed through and uh, supply other components as well. Next we have the eight IO link ports. These are M12 plugs that you can use to connect your sensors and equipment. And the complete uh, master also exists in a version with the screw connections, but uh, these plugs are very convenient. Then we have the three uh, um, dip switches or adjustment wheels. These are used for adjusting or setting the IP address of the device. Right now, all three are set to zero, so that means we will get this IP. And then we have the two Ethernet ports at the end. To read and write data from the IOLink master, we will connect the computer through the OPC UA interface. There are also other protocols supported, like Profinet or Modbus TCP, but we will be using OPC UA. And at the bottom, we see the two sensors we are going to connect using the IOLink protocol. And we are going to plug it into two of these eight uh, ports here. This uh, small sensor is an ultrasonic distance sensor. It will measure the distance from the white ring here and to the closest surface. The other uh, sensor here is actually a combination of uh, eight digital inputs or outputs. So the three wires here are used for the IO-Link uh, interface and the remaining eight wires are used uh, to, for example, control lamps or buttons. And to make these work, we need the correct configuration files. Uh, for IO-Link, these files are called IODD files, and we can go uh, over to the internet and uh, take a look and see if we can find the files. The page where we can find most of the IODD files is called IODD Finder. So I will write in the manufacturer and the product name. We see that we get one uh, result here, and that is the correct IODD file. But we can also find the file at the Pepper and Fuchs website, and they also provide some more information in their IODD files, so I will uh, uh, use this one. We can uh, now unzip the file, and we can go into the doc folder, and open the English uh, version uh, for our correct model, which, which is this one. So we see that they provide some information about the sensor, and this uh, IODD file also provides information for the software inside the IO Link Master. For example, we can see that the range of the sensor is 30 to 400 millimeters, and also a small connection. Uh, diagram here. So that was the first IODD file, then we can go over to the second device and download the IODD file for this as well. There's actually no need for unzipping the uh, file because we will upload the zipped version to the IODD master later. To know how we are going to connect this wire correctly, we can take a look at the documentation. As you see here, the eight wires at the bottom are the eight signals. If you, for example, want to connect a switch, you can wire it between the red wire and uh, the channel you want. And you can do the same thing for a lamp. So in my case, I have uh, already prepared a connection to uh, work like this. We have the sensor here and uh, it's connected through the terminal blocks and through these uh, two buttons and uh, four lamps. 
So channels one, two, and three, and zero are connected to the lamps, and the two next are connected to the buttons. And for the IO link connection, I've connected an M12 connector. So now we're ready to hook everything up. I've already connected an M12 cable here, and we can now screw on the ultrasonic sensor on this one. So now the ultrasonic sensor is connected to channel 3. We can also connect this 8 digital I.O. module to channel 8. And finally, we can connect the Ethernet cable to our computer. Now we have to set a static IP address on the network card of the computer. Open settings and go to network and internet. Go to ethernet and uh, uh, click on the ethernet adapter shown here. Uh, now you can go to IP settings and click edit. Uh, I've set the IP address already to 192.168.1.2. And I've uh, used the uh, 24 as the subnet mask. On the gateway, I've used the IP address of the IOLink master. So that's it. Uh, press save. We can now open command prompt and we can try to ping the device. We see that it is responding, so uh, this looks promising. Now open your web browser and type in the IP address of the device. I've already done this earlier, so I have uh, made a password protection. But the first time you log in, you don't need any password. Now we're inside the web interface of the IOLink master. The first thing we can do is to go to the diagnostic page and see if the devices we connected are visible. And we see one device on port 3 and another device on port 8. So everything seems to be connected correctly. The next step is to upload the IODD files. We can move over to attached devices and upload our files. Now both the files are uploaded and the IOLink master is able to use all the features of the connected IOLink devices. The next thing you should do is to create a password for the admin account. That's because some features are only available if you are logged in as admin. Now we can move on to activating the OPC UA server. We can go into the configuration part here open the OPC UA tab and we can edit here. Then we press enable on the server and press save. We also need to make sure that this port 8 has uh, write writing enabled because we are going to write to one of the eight uh, outputs later. So you press edit and uh, change it like this. Now we're going to restart the device to make the changes take effect. You do that by going to the advanced tab. And when you're there, press uh, reboot. Now the device is up and running again and we can log in. We can now check if the IODD files are found. We can go to attached devices and open the port 8. And we see that the picture is loaded from the IODD file. So that means that the IODD file has been mapped to the correct device. Now, when we are inside uh, this port 8 uh, configuration window, we can configure settings related to this uh, specific device. In this case, this 8th uh, uh, port IO device. So to edit, we press edit and we can scroll down and do our changes. As default, every 
wire is uh, set as a digital output as you see here the two means digital output and for the four first uh, that's what we want but for number five and six we want to set it as an input because i've already connected a button to that uh, wire so we will uh, make that a one and also for the next one we set it as a digital input and then we press save and we are done with the configuration on the IO link master. We are now going to connect to the OPC server on the IO link master using an OPC client. So we are going to use the one called UA expert from unified automation. UA expert can be downloaded from this page, but you need to register first, but it is completely free. When you have installed UA Expert and opened the program, we can first add our server. So we will press add here. We will not use a password, so the anonymous option here is OK. And you don't either have to do anything here. You can then add uh, the IP address in this uh, field here. So you double press on the uh, server you want to connect press ok and the server gives you an endpoint which we can uh, choose we can then uh, right click on the server and press connect the first time you are connecting you will also have to confirm that you trust the certificate of the opc server but i, I have done this before so it does not appear here in my case we can now start uh, exploring the node tree that the OPC server provides. In the object folder, we can open the IOLM folder. And we see that we have available the eight ports of the IOLink master. We know that we have connected equipment to port three and port eight. So we will open port three and we can uh, go directly into the attached device. This is the ultrasonic sensor. And if we now open the PDI data and sign 32, we can drag it over in the main window. We, we see that we are getting some values. This is the distance uh, measurement from the ultrasonic sensor. So when I drag the node into the center window, it starts to update uh, continuously. That's because uh, the UA expert creates a subscription automatically. So now we can take a quick check to see if the values make sense. Now I have placed a plate in the middle of the screen and the value is around 700. If I place it to the far right, it's around 1500, almost uh, the double. So that makes sense. And now it's uh, around uh, 375. So uh, this seems to be working fine. It's also possible to view the values in a different format, for example, the byte string or the byte array. Uh, so this works as well, but I think uh, the unsigned integer makes most sense in this case. We can also take a look at the other uh, IO-Link device that is connected to port 8. We go into port 8 and the attached device. And because we have both inputs and outputs connected to this, we need to change the PDO valid uh, element. We have to set it to true, so that's done like this. Now we will be able to uh, use both inputs and outputs. We can now try to activate some outputs. We are inside port 8 and the attached device, and we can go to the PDO byte data byte array. We can drag it into the center window here, and we see that it contains two byte values. And uh, the bits that these bytes consist of, they act as the state of the output of the eight ports on the device. So we can start by writing a one here, and we should then see that on the actual lamp on the device, the first lamp should light on, and it does. 
So to make the next lamp uh, work, we activate the uh, uh, bit number two, which means the byte value should be two, and the uh, next lamp lights on. To get uh, this lamp uh, lighting, we need to write eight here, and uh, this uh, works as expected. So uh, this was uh, the output, then we can go over to the input signal, that is the PDI byte that we see here. And we see that the values are initially 0, 0, but if I press the button here, which is number 5, uh, yeah, acts as bit number 5 in the byte, we should see a value of 16 that appears. And when I press it, we see immediately that uh, we get number 16. The next button will give us a value of 32, and if we combine them, of course, we get the sum. So, now we have demonstrated both read and write operations with numerical values and digital signals. So that's it for this demonstration. Thank you.